Hey everyone, this is Chandler, and today I want to walk you through what your typical marketing life cycle looks like, how you should organize that life cycle, and why one thing will always feed into another thing, and why some of these things are going to feed right back into other things, and why this looks like a whole convoluted mess we're going to have to organize today. I also have my friend Pepe the Squirrel joining me. He's right here. He's a southern flying squirrel. He's in my shirt. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how everything flows. So in the beginning phases of the buyer journey, which is kind of up here in this area, is where we have our social, our awareness phases. We have our social media, we have our blogs, we have our influencers. We can even throw Google over here. So these are all things that we're putting out there to build awareness around our brand, to provide content, to build a relationship, and to establish trust in the consumers that we're trying to market to. So what all of these do is they get you in, on the mind of the intended consumer and then eventually when the consumer is ready to purchase, they're going to search on Google for you and go to your website. <clears throat> so your website in this whole process, you can think of it as just a shell to collect, to give a little bit of information and to collect email addresses for your leads or if you have some sort of like e-commerce program, your website is going to be your platform where you sell people things on. So the ultimate goal is to nurture people effectively enough and long enough to get them to actually want to visit your website and get them warm to buy by the time they get there. We do that through our social media, our blogs, our influencers, and then eventually when that's worked well enough, they either go straight from your website or from these platforms to your website or they go from Google to your website. Next, last thing we want to look at too is local business development. If you are a local business, business development and on the internet if you sell uh, products on the internet, business development with other businesses and influencers are a huge piece of this. So you want local businesses or other businesses on the internet linking to you. So you have the, the biz dev going to all your social media. So biz dev goes here as well. And that eventually goes to your website. So biz dev, social media, blogs, influencers, leading to Google, leading to your website. Everything flows to that center piece. Now what happens when we get to our website? Well, now we want to collect their email address. If they make a purchase, they might buy now. They're going to be going to your email pipeline anyway. So now you have a new email pipeline. If they purchase now, they're going to go into a newsletter platform. Newsletter is going to progressively ask them to buy again or refer people to purchase from you because referrals are one of your best sources of getting new, new buyers. The newsletter is often going to leak back into your social media, your blogs, and your other content, and even your influencers you're talking with. <clears throat> now, if we get someone who goes from these phases into your website or straight from these phases into your emails or from your website into your emails, and they're not quite ready to buy, you still want to collect their email address so that way when they are ready to purchase, you're, you're in front of them and you're still making contact and still building that relationship with them. Pepe's eating my, my eraser right now. Stop eating that. You're out of control. I told you you had to behave in this video. Okay, so now when we go from emails uh, to if they don't buy now, they're going to go from emails and they're going to buy later pathway. So buy later means we need to send them a series of emails to continue to build that relationship. So we send them maybe a newsletter that links back to stuff you posted on social media. Maybe you post some product alerts every once in a while. You just you keep in front of them and you warm them up via these email campaigns. We call this nurturing your leads or nurturing your prospects. So we need to warm them up before they'll actually buy if they weren't ready to buy initially. Now after they're in the newsletter, that nurturing is going to essentially send them to buy now. Buy now is going to lead them over here to buy again and refer people. So as you can see in this whole little mess, <clears throat> everything leads into everything leads into everything. So your marketing is all this, this entire cycle. And if you don't have everything involved here, you're going to be failing in some regards. So you have to have social media. You have to have Google pushing your website. You have to have your websites pushing your social media. You have to have your website and your social media pushing your emails, biz dev pushing to everything. If they're not ready to buy, you have to have a nurturing campaign. You have to be sending them emails. If they're ready to buy now, you have to be able to put them in a newsletter campaign and continuously send them emails so they'll buy again and refer friends. And this as well leads right back in your social media, blogs, website, business development. So remember, if you're missing a piece of this, it's time to look at your sales process, map it out, and define and outline what you need to do to make the system work. Thanks for watching.